everyone has a hand in the success of the pro program. And I'm just, and I, I, I feel like I can always brag on them because when I got started coaching them, they were already good. The boys team had won six straight state championships the first year I coached them. And so they were good long before I got there. I just didn't screw it up and I've helped. And I, and I think our kids really um, bought in and all the people that played there before they they'll call and, and encourage these kids and they really take pride in that because as they should it says unlike most high school teams i can say that it's, it's really a, a program more than a team Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Whole Story Podcast. This one's going to be a fun one today. Uh, for those that might be new to the podcast, we've this is season two. We've had some incredible guests, Tom Coyne, Matt Janella, Alan Shipnuck, uh, Mark Immelman, just to name a few. And, and today we've got another great guest. Uh, before we get to it, uh, I do need to mention one of our uh, friends of best ball, Western Birch uh, Golf Tees. Uh, if you haven't used Western Birch before, I highly recommend them. Uh, they are super durable. I don't know if Robert and the team uses Western Birch or not, but you can get them customized uh, mm -hmm. with your logo on them, uh, and they just they they're awesome. So go to WesternBirch.com, get you some, and if you use the code BestBall in the shipping cart, you can get a get a free uh, a little free gift with it. So uh, today's guest, like I said, is a special one. Uh, I've known Robert Dargan uh, for a long time. We go to church together. Um, he is an accomplished golfer, especially here in the state of South Carolina, uh, and he is the uh, golf coach for AC Flora, which yesterday won the 18th, their 18th state championship. So, Robert, welcome to the Whole Story Podcast. Thank you, Robbie. Thanks for having me. And uh, just touching on what you, your last advertiser there, they are good golf tees, and they we do use them. AC Flora's colors are red and Carolina, or we say sky blue, but it's South, no, really North Carolina blue. And um, we've had some ordered, and they are, and I will echo that they are super durable. You can really, um, they don't, they don't break every shot. I can tell you that they, they'll last. They're hard. They yeah, wood. They're great. I, I was telling somebody I just joined the uh, Golfers Journal and the Broken Tea Society, and you uh -huh. know their their logo is that broken tea, and I don't. I don't. I think I've broken one of my Western Birch teas uh, to make it look like uh, that logo. Uh -huh. But but anyway, uh, I like so, the way they. I like the way they make them with the um, the dark, the stained wood. It's a good look, and they really shows up well in the green grass. And I played with one. Gosh, we were down there playing at Berkeley Hall Saturday before the state tournament, and I teed off with one. And they had the good firm tee boxes there, and um, it, it lasted me the whole day. They they so do pretty good stuff. They do. Oh, man, Western Birch, yeah, we we like them. So, Robert, before we talk about AC Flora and the 18th championship, let's talk about you a little bit. How did you sure. – what's your story? How did you get involved in golf? Well, I'm 54 years old, so not a spring chicken anymore. And um, so I don't feel that old, but I, but I am. And um, my dad uh, was a really good golfer, and he that was his thing. He played golf in college at Walford. In Spartanburg, and um, he's from Spartanburg, and he got my older sister and myself. I'm the middle child, and David, my younger brother, he just exposed us to golf. And um, my sister had wanted nothing to do with it, and um, which is understandable sometimes. And um, David and I just kind of took to it, and he just would take us out there when we were little kids, and we'd play in the sand traps and play a couple holes and ride the card and go have go on the snack bar and hang out. And I just, you know. The older I got, the more I enjoyed it. And David was he's younger than me by um, what four years, and so we just, I mean, you know, my dad passed away in two thousand five, and um, and um, my mom's still alive, and we were just a golfing family. And I can I honestly can think of the ten favorite memories of my dad, probably six or seven of them on the golf course, and um, it's always been like a family thing for us. And so that was kind of how that was my introduction to golf, probably like most kids. And, their parents just introduced them to it, and uh, I just kind of took to it. So, yeah, my buddy Jonathan, who normally co-hosts with me, he is uh, he is coaching football uh, there in Augusta tonight. So they've uh, got spring practice, uh, but he and I always talk about it. It's really all about who you play with, and and getting to play with family is, is really cool. You and your brother David, 
are incredible golfers. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't know if you and I have ever played together. I'm, I know I've played with David. And I got to think we have at one point it maybe our our church thing, haven't we? I yeah, I, we well, I know we've played against each other. And for uh, the record, if you show up to a first press golf tournament and Robert is on the on the list, you're you're fighting for a second. You hope he and David <laughs> are on the same team because if they're on different teams, then you might just be competing for third. But um, so you and your brother, I mean, you did you you played at Carolina? Is that correct? South Carolina, yes. Yeah. One so time, I, one time, one time, I made the mistake was. I was playing in a golf tournament in North Carolina, and after the first round, I had the lead. The guy goes, well, tell me, you know, where did you play college golf? I go, Carolina. I just call it Carolina. We call it Carolina. And so then the website said, North Carolina, 1990, North Carolina graduate, Robert Darkman. And I was like, what? And so I told him, I was like, I played in South Carolina. And he goes, well, you said Carolina. I was like, Carolina means something different in South Carolina. So I had to always have to preface South Carolina now. Yeah. So, um yeah, right. so you, you played at South Carolina, and you've had quite a, an amateur career after that. You and your brother have won. I think you've won a couple of mid-ams. I think you all have won. Uh, you're a lefty. He's a righty. You've kind of done the lefty-righty thing. You've won uh, right. the lefty championship. Like, Tell me about playing amateur golf, competitive golf here in South Carolina. Okay. Um, well, like I said, I grew up playing golf, and I played you know junior golf and the whole way through. And then I played golf at South Carolina. I started in 1987. And when I started playing golf, I was very much a, you know, nothing special. Like, you know, and my dad always told me, you get out what you put in. And um, and so, and then we moved from Anderson, South Carolina, to Columbia when I was in. We lived in Columbia, moved to Anderson when I was in third grade. Jackie Sewell, that most pe golf people know of, know of him, he's a Hall of Fame, played golf in South Carolina, great junior program in Anderson, had a ton of good players. A lot of them were his – three of them were his sons, Jay, who's the golf coach at Alabama, Daniel, who is a head club pro, very accomplished teacher. He was a teammate of mine at South Carolina. And David's the youngest, who's the same age as my little brother, David. David played at South Carolina, um, was SEC Player of the Year one year, played on the PGA Tour for a couple of years, very good player. And, um, and so – I started in that program, the junior program at Cobbs Glen and Anderson, and I was, you know, very average, you know, like, and I just kind of kept, you know, having fun with it, working, you know, limited success. And then we moved to Columbia, and I just always assumed, and, and I started a while with Country Club where Grant Bennett was the pro, and he was a very, um, you know, again, another Hall of Famer. And um, he was, you know, had an incredible junior program in Florida's Country Club, and he came to Wildwood, and we lived right down the street with the second green. And so, I just kept, you know, they didn't have the junior program at Wildwood. They had it at Cobbs, but I learned that no one did, really. I mean, like, when you look at these junior programs around the state, um, you have Forest Country Club and Haraldton Forest Lake is, I'll get, we'll touch on that, I'm sure, in a little bit with AC Flora, but they are second to none as far as um, their junior program. And so I just said there were every club was like that, but I learned that it wasn't, and that I ended up playing with a lot of the men and South Carolina practiced out there a good bit. I knew a couple guys on the team when I was younger, and they kind of took me under their wing and let me play a little bit with them, which is always cool. Matt McCarley, who's the head pro at Camden. David Tuttle, who's a businessman here in Columbia. He, um, I knew him because his family lived in Wildwood, and he kind of would let me join in with the Carolina guys a little bit. So I was a South Carolina fan anyway from the jump. And so when I started getting a little better at it and they started recruiting me, I knew that's where I wanted to go. But, um, you know, you never know how, where it's going to end up. And so – it just, you know, kind of just went went from there. I never really thought of it as – it always felt like fun to me. It never seemed like work. And I always tell these kids on the golf team at Flora, you know, it is – golf is a game, first and foremost, and it's meant to be enjoyed. And you got to enjoy it. Sometimes it's easier than done, especially the better you get, the more frustrating it can be to a point where, you know, it kind of can wear you down sometimes. You got to always kind of remind yourself, hey, this is fun. I'm supposed to enjoy this. And it's easy to have fun when everything's going right, but it's hard to sometimes you know, do it when things aren't going your way. And my dad was always just so great about that. He would just he was, he had this way about him that would just um he would um you know, he would come watch me play. And I know you the series in my face here, but if I did something stupid like a junior golf thing, I would look over and he would go. That was his move. That was his tell. He didn't say a word. He would just do that. And I knew it was like, okay, I know I screwed up. And then he, but then he wouldn't say a word to me. And like, you know, because it wasn't like he would, you know, he's emotion, you're emotional about it when it happens or right after it happens. Then he would say something like, let's say we're at dinner that night or maybe even two or three days later. He would say, hey, you know, back there the other day on number five, 
your second shot, what were you thinking there? And I was like, um, I knew what he was talking about, but I would play stupid. It's like, what are you talking about? It's like, you know what I'm talking about. And it's like, it's like, yeah, I just wasn't really sure. I'd, he goes, yeah, you didn't commit to what you were doing. You got to make a decision, stick with it. You know, the, the one thing that I, you know, that's how I was brought up playing. And um, you just have to kind of trust in your abilities. And I would rather, he would say, I'd rather, you, he'd said this a lot. He goes, I'd rather you get the wrong shot committed than the right shot, not halfway in, halfway out. And if you, if you prepare yourself, give it to your best ability, commit to what you're doing, then whatever happens is going to happen. You really have controlled everything that you can control. And after that, you know, it is, but the golf's hard. It's unfair. It's like life. You know, when you get a bad break, he would say, I was like, that's not fair. And he goes, who ever told you it was fair? This is not fair. Nothing's fair about this. That's the beauty of it and the maddening part of it, too. That's why we keep coming back and playing. And that's um, – so, again, when I went to South Carolina, I was – I was I'd won the state juniors at Lexington in 1987. I won the state high school tournament that summer. And I'd had some success starting at about 15. I started to get, get pretty good at it. Then, obviously, the more success you get, you know, then, okay, this, the, the, the winning part's fun. This is fun. I, I, I like doing this. And so – and then I had a, and then I had a good college career. And then uh, – I turned pro after college, played for a couple of years, played in a handful of Hogan Tour events. And I didn't play golf for, oh, let's see. After I stopped playing, I had to get a job and, you know, be an adult a little bit. And, um, and I, from about 24 to 28, 29, when I was 29 years old, did not touch a club, did not touch a club at all. And then I got married to my wife, Angela Dargan, who's um, Angela Wendler then. And we've been married for 26 years. And, um, so we've been we've been married six months or so, and she goes, "Hey, so and so at work said you used to play golf. You should you should do that again." And I used to go to try that again. And I was like, "I wasn't a member of a club." And um, I was like, "Okay, well, a lot of my friends are members at Spring Valley at the time, country club." And so, the funny part of that story I'm going to share with you is that if anyone's ever been out there, you know the clubhouse and the pro shop are separated. And there's a little walkway down through there, and so I'm meet some friends out there to play golf on a Saturday, and um, I'm walking down that little walkway with. But Joy Classics on and spikes like everybody used to wear when I played before. And um, click, 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 click. All these guys in the putting room turn around and look at me like, who is this guy? I go on there, but like, hey, you can't wear those. What do you mean? What do you mean I can't wear these? These are spikes. And um, they've been outlawed. Somewhere in those four or five years I didn't play golf, they outlawed spikes. And I had to like, you know, so it was a, you know, and I kind of started back playing a little bit here and there. I joined Columbia Country Club, and that's where the good players were at the time. And then I started playing again, and then I started playing some amateur golf. So I had about seven years there. Where I didn't really compete, or for the most part, didn't touch a club. And then I honestly think that was um, probably why I started. I kind of fell in love with golf all over again because I just had to stop playing. And it was just that I've had some success here and there with mid ams and some USGA stuff, like you talked about, and that kind of stuff. So I've been I've been fortunate, and it's but I've enjoyed it. The big thing now to me is it's not so much the it's more the relationships and the friendships that you make through golf. I used to always, I always tell people that when I was younger, I had golf clothes and clothes and you wouldn't be caught dead out off the golf course in golf clothes because they looked so ridiculous. And now they've gotten a lot better. And I had my golf friends and my friends' friends and they really didn't mix either too much. And now I just have clothes and friends. And so yeah. it's really, so that's just, that's kind of what I do in my spare time. Yeah. Honestly. That's a great way to put it. And and now you're taking that wisdom or you have been taking that wisdom and mm-hmm. passing it on in, a, in the coaching realm. I uh-huh. think it was it 2016 you took over for Harry Huntley, another yep. legend yep. at AC Flora. Is that right? Yep. Harry um, coached the boys team for 16 years and the girls team for five. And um, my daughter Blair, who's now 25, She's a nurse at Lexington Medical. Um, she broke her foot in soccer for Flora in seventh and eighth grade twice. I was like, hey, this is, you know, why don't you try golf? There's, I mean, broken foots in golf. You know? And I was like, so called Harry up and didn't really know him, but I knew of him. And goes, golf's a small world, especially Columbia is a town. And South Carolina is one degree of separation. And everybody knows everybody for the most part. And golf is a small world. And he goes, I said, Blair's going to come out for the team. And, you know, she's not. She's a beginner, but I'll help her. Then Harry, being a politician, he was a he was an elected official for a long time, and you know he goes, 
hey, why don't you come help with the team some you know, if you can? I was like, okay. And David and I own a janitorial company, Custodial Choice Incorporated. And our afternoons are fairly flexible and things are going normal. And um, a lot of times they're not. But um, so I started coming out and helping. And then about a month into the season, he goes, I got a great idea. I was like, why don't you start coaching next year? I was like, is that, I said, what are you talking about? Because well, his daughter, Catherine, was a senior at the time. And um, she's going to Washington Lee. And uh, she lives in Austin, Texas, now, I believe. Works for, I think she works for Facebook or Google, I think. I mean, anyway, anyway, but, um, and so I said, I can't do that. No, nah, I can't do that. And um, Angela, my wife, again, she goes, well, why, why can't you? That'd be fun. You would enjoy that. And I had, and then I, I, and I'll share this with you. I was thinking about something that Hap Lathrop said. He's the, he's the retired director of the South Carolina Golf Association. And he had this thing every year called the Palmetto Cup matches where they played the pros, played the amateurs. And I've probably played it on a 20, 20, 25 of them, I guess, over the years. And um, it's kind of a Ryder Cup format. And um, we were down to Daniel Allen the shooting that year. And I remember this from a while back. And I'm, normally I was one of the younger guys, at, you know, in the tournament. And um, at the time, now I'd be one of the older guys for sure. And um, he was like, they had a little impromptu meeting about the club pro business and golf in general and how we can, what we can do to, to to grow the game, basically. And he said, I don't know why I remember this as vividly as I do, but I just somebody asked me about this today, and I remember, and I brought it up to him. Uh, and that he said, um, each of you, each of you talking to the amateur guys, so the club pros are already getting back to the game, really. And um, that's their job. And um, Y'all each will be presented with opportunities to get back to the game. And it'll be up to you if you will take the initiative to fall through on those. And one of some somebody said, What do you mean by that? He goes, Well, it, it, obviously money is important. You have to, you know, all this stuff costs money, but as the older you get, your time is more important a lot of times than money. And um, if you'll be willing to give up your time to help grow the game, then that's what he was really talking about. And I started thinking about that and I was like, you know, this is kind of what he was talking about. And it's just, I didn't seek this out or anything. It just kind of fell in my lap. And I was like, you know, this is, this would be fun. And maybe I could help. I've always coached my kids and church basketball and rec soccer. And I know nothing about that for the most part, just the average you know, knowledge of that. And I do, I feel like I do have some knowledge about golf that I could help. And, and so, um, so I said, sure, I'll do it. I was like, is that the deal? You got to find your replacement. He goes, well, you kind of do, but, or else, you know, who knows what who they'll get. And so that was how I started doing it. And I told him now, I was like, now the spring is when I really play a lot of golf. So I can't do the boys. And he goes, oh, I'm going to keep coaching the boys. His son was a junior at the time. And so two years later, he, he goes, I want you to take over the boys team. And I was like, well, I already said I can't do that. And then, you know, we had some discussions with the school. And then now I've been doing that for 10 years. And and um, this is actually my last year coaching the boys. Uh, the boy, I've been a I'm not necessarily retiring, but I'm going to step away from the day-to-day part of it, and hopefully I can be assist on a part-time basis with both teams. Okay. So that's kind of how I got involved. I was how I kind of, I kind of it was just, I thought it was by accident. Maybe it was by design. Coach Huntley is the only one that can say that. But um, anyway, he has been so supportive of me, and um, all the people have like you know it does. And you hear that old phrase: "It takes a village," and and. Um, as far as golf and team golf, it really does. I mean, the parents, you know, your son Archie played for a year mm-hmm. where he found his passion in, in track and field, which is awesome. Proud of him. I've been following him. He's doing great. And um, and I always take a little – I always smile when I see that because I was like, that kid was on our golf team, you know, whatever, eight years ago or six years ago, whatever it was. Maybe probably eight years ago, wasn't it? Something like that. It was a while back. And, uh, yeah, it was his so, seventh grade year, and now he's a freshman yeah, in college. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So, was, yeah, a while back. And, um, and so um, it's – um. You know, we've had such great support. The golf team, the golf program, and I always, I always say it's a golf program because we've won 18 state championships, 17 by the boys and one by the girls. And and I, I always the girls work hard too, and um, we haven't had quite had success on the girls' side. We've had we've had an individual state champion on the girls' side and several runner-up finishes at state and several third-place finishes. They're knocking at the door, and we just and they're and they're really you know and um. They're going to be good in the future too. So um, I'm proud of them as equally as much as I am of the boys team. So but the school, the community, Spurt Northwoods is our home course. They've been so supportive. Forest Lake Club, we've hosted the state championship there. They've been so supportive. So at Columbia Country Club, where I'm a member, they've been so supportive. They always let our boys and girls come out and play. So everyone has a hand in the success of the program. And I'm just, and I, I, 
I feel like I can always brag on them because when I got started coaching them, they were already good. The boys team had won six straight state championships the first year I coached them. And so they were good long before I got there. I just didn't screw it up. And I've helped. And I, and I think our kids really um, bought in and all the people that played there before, they, they'll call and, and encourage these kids. And they really take pride in that because as they should, it says, Unlike most high school teams, I can say that. It's, it's really a, a program more than a team. Yeah, and I think you point out the the kind of the family atmosphere of it where, you know, I see you posting on Facebook all the time of, of players coming back or get-togethers and, awesome. um, and and things like that where everybody's still, yeah, I'm still a part of the AC Floor golf team, whether I graduated, yeah. you know, last year, still on the team, whether I graduated uh-huh. 20 years ago. So uh, great job, uh, great job doing that. It was funny. When I was doing a little research, uh, I saw an article from the Sun newspaper. I think it was 2016, and it was talking about your first year coaching. Yeah, um, and it had uh, Dwight Cawthon, uh, young yeah. Dwight Cawthon, in the picture. But somehow his little brother snuck into the front of the picture. Charles, yeah, Charles, who is a junior on your golf team this year. So yeah, uh, yeah, he just he knew it was coming at some point. He just wanted to get in there early. Yes, yeah, that's it's got and it's. You see a lot of that with the brothers and the, the older brothers. We've even had some, you know, some of the kids that my uncle played at AC Flora and my dad played at AC Flora back in the 70s. And he's, I mean, it, it is, you know, we had, you know, Spring Valley High School, where I went to high school, was coached by Coach John Bolware and Ron Intermill. And um, they were AC Flora before AC Flora, um, honestly. It was like Spring Valley High School and Irma High School were the two dominant golf schools in the state. I'm not sure why the beach schools didn't do more than they did, but they just didn't. And if we beat Irma, we won state. If Irma beat us, they won state 4A. And that was the highest classification. And now it's 5A. But um, somewhere along the line, I can't remember what I'm I think he won about 11 state championships in 15 years. David, my brother, I think won. And he was on a team of four or five in a row. And um, then he had, after then, he had, Jordan and Jonathan Bird, that group came through there, and they were dominant. And then Coach Interman retired, and I'm not sure who took over to that, but then it kind of, um, you know, didn't have the success that it had. So, and I always tell our kids, you know, and I use Spring Valley, and I, you know, I, I, we always play Spring Valley matches, and, and I was like, you know, it, you really, it's up to y'all to continue this, and and you know, and make the older guys, you have to lead by example. Younger guys are watching them and learning from them, good, bad, or different. And we never talk about wins and losses. And so we have three goals every year we talk about. One is to represent the school in a positive manner. The other is to have fun. And the other is to work hard. And if we do th- those three things, then the other, everything else will kind of fall in line. And um, I'm proud of them for that. They, they've really – they're mature beyond their years. Which is kind of- yeah. Well, everything has uh, definitely fallen in place this year. Do you uh, – Talk to us a little bit about the team, uh, full of, uh, you know, a wide variety of classes. Do you have some seniors right. that that kind of led by yeah. example? Yes, absolutely. We had two – only had two seniors this year, which is normally we try to – again, Coach Huntley told me when I started, I was like, all right, tell me tell me how this works. I mean, I have no clue. And um, he goes, you really want to get three or four a class, really three a class is a good number because, you know, three times, what, six is 18, right? Okay, 18. And – um not great at math and um but um we usually carry about 15 or 16 and um that's the number i try to keep it at between the varsity and jb level and you try to get them young the key is to get them young and um have them you know really learn the system and really improve and you get them involved in summer tournaments and then hopefully they get the golf bug that's important because once you do golf bug you just want to play golf and you and you're never going to get good enough it's always going to beat you down a little bit that's just the nature of the game and then by the time they're freshmen, they can really start contributing, and hopefully it kind of rolls on itself. But our seniors this year were Coleman Ferguson and um, Thomas Lamar. Coleman has been with us six years, great player, and did everything I ever asked of him. Awesome teammate, and that's very important to our success, just being a good teammate and being a you know, rah-rah. You, don't, you know, golf is not a rah-rah sport. And if you do, you know, if you're fist bumping and, you know, slapping high fives, it's just it's artificial, that work in golf, you know, uncaged emotion is that will get you in trouble in golf. And um, so you got to kind of be, you know, 
mature beyond your years to be successful. And the kids that kind of learn that the quickest are the ones that are going to, you know, succeed the quickest. And, um, and Coleman got that. And, um, you know, I remember he was a tiny little kid. I mean, tiny. And he was like, I played golf with him, gosh, at Columbia the year before COVID. One summer, rather messing around, I had a few kids. And um, he's like, Coach, I still hit it anywhere. And I was like, Coleman, you're going to be fine. Okay. I was like, the kid, trust me, you're going to appreciate this one day. And um, the kids that the distance comes last are the ones that excel the most. And, you know, they're like the, they're like the tor- tortoise in the, in the hair race. They, they win the race because they have to develop their entire game to be competitive. They have to be good chippers and punters. They have to think they were able to go. Of course, they can't afford to waste shots because they don't have the power to, you know, to, to hit par fives and two and, you know, and hit wedges into par fours and make a bunch of birdies. Unless they just put the eyes out of it, and um, so then like we had the COVID year, we didn't have a season, and then the next year, when the when, before we left, before COVID, I was hitting about forty yards past Coleman, and I'm an average length guy. I probably hit two seventy off the tee back then, two seventy five, and um, which is average by you know decent player standards, I think, and um, and um, and then like the next two years later, he came back and he was hitting it forty yards past me. I was like, you gained 80 yards in two years. Remember what we talked about? He goes, yeah. It's like, then he, he's, he's long. He probably hits at 320. And, wow. um, and yeah, he got a great golf swing. And, uh, and he works hard. And he's a good teammate. And he's a good kid. And he comes from a good family. So he's going to Coastal next year on a golf scholarship. And he's going to do well. And I think he'll even be a better college player than he was a junior player. That's and Thomas awesome. Lamar Thomas Lamar came to us in ninth grade. He's from, Ham- from Heathwood, excuse me. And, um, again, he's, he was tiny. And his mom is tiny. They, they call they call Marcy Marcy Lamar tiny. That's her nickname. And she is tiny. And um, I told her one time, I was like, Thomas, a small mama can only hold you back for so long. And again, he had the same deal. He had to just survive with everything else but distance. And now, and now it came. And he is really his last two years. Is he's coming to his own. He's been one of the best players in the state. And he's um, he's proved it in the summertime and um, and during the school year. And he's been one of our leaders. And he's steady, Eddie, and I mean that as a compliment. He hits a lot of fairways, a lot of greens, good wedge player, excellent putter, and um, he's going to do well in college. He's going to Winthrop. And um, Kevin Penley, who's the coach up there who I'm friends with, he goes, I like his bulldog mentality. And I was like, that is a perfect way to describe him. He's a, he's a bulldog, and he um, he just grinds it out and um, be a great teammate. You know, and he's going to do well at college, too. And, and he, and, got and second. That, he got second, correct? And yeah, so- yeah, yeah, and he, and he – Again, you know, he, we've all, we've we have we've only had four in our success historically. We've only had four individual state champions, and um, and I know we'd have more. It's that these kids sacrifice for the better for the team. I didn't see. I mean, you know, I always tell them it's team competition and individuals. You know, is is um, secondary here. And I remember I used the, the example of. My senior year in high school, I won the state four A. I don't know by a pretty wide margin. I think about ten shots, and um, I played well. And our team lost by four, and it was the most. It was the probably the most hollow win I ever had, because it was like, oh, well, you know, it didn't really mean a. I, I tell them that, you know, when when it's all said and done, you look back on. You know, I mean, I'm still trying to. I'm I'm still playing, and, and not playing as well as I like, but I'm still playing, and um. I say you look back on your, you know, wins and the wins that mean they mean the most are the ones that I share with somebody else. You know, you know your team wins, in college and in, in South Carolina, and some high school wins, and obviously the four ball wins and that kind of stuff. And you know, I remember winning the four state four ball with my father, and that was so cool when I was in college. And then, you know, fifteen years later, I came back and David and I won the same tournament, state four ball. And every time you play a USG event, they ask you, you know, some questions just in case you get on television, so they'll know something about you. So they can just, they can't just be dead air. So, and they said, well, we haven't seen one of your fondest memories of your playing days, you know, if you were to get on television. And I was like, well, winning this SCGA four ball in 1990 with my father, and then in um, 2000, oh gosh, two or four, whatever. I mean, 2000, whatever, with my brother. I should remember the I should remember the year, but um. Anyway, I thought that was a really neat memory. That's one thing that I hold special. That's like when you're when you have when you're all working towards it in a team environment like college or in high school, when you're working towards a common goal and everybody's working towards that, 
and you win. It's it's really cool to celebrate your teammates. And so Thomas, to get back to him, he he finished second. Yes, he did. And he never asked me how he stood. And we had a shotgun start the final day because of the rain delay. Because we didn't have online scoring, so it was hard for me to know until the very end. But he was more concerned about the team than he was about the individual, and that says a lot about him as a as a as a, as a, as a teammate and a, and a player. He, yeah. he he's gonna win his, he's gonna win his fair share of individual stuff. Yeah, it seems like your your whole team is that way, right? Like everybody's fighting for the team, and the success is uh, proof of everybody playing for each other. In my twelve years of coaching the team, of ten years, excuse me, ten years, or the end of twelve years of the. I've never had a player ask me where they stood individually. Now, I've, I've asked them, do they want to know sometimes, but I know. Like one year, we had a young lady, Gracie McCoy. She was going to win. She was going to win the individual state championship, and we were pretty safely going to finish second. And the last hole had, like, water down the left. It had a kind of a water in front of the green. And I was like – and she was teeing off. And I, I thought she needed to know where she stood just so she didn't know she had to do anything crazy. I was like, you want the good news or the bad news? And she goes, I want the good news. I was like, the good news is you have a four-shot lead. She goes, what's the bad news? I go, there is no bad news. You have a four-shot lead, so just go enjoy it, okay? And she hit it. She laid up and played the way she's supposed to, and I made a routine par, and that went in by four. And um, and so she's about – he's the only individual state champion that I have coached. So, But we've had a, we've had a bunch of team championships, and that's, and that's the most important thing. We had a bunch of, kid, bunch of young men finish second. Had a lot of seconds. Five yeah. seconds. Well, it's uh, it's been fun to watch. Um, yeah, and uh, congrats on uh, I guess going out in style. Um, uh, but but let me ask you a couple other things. We always ask our, our guests, um, uh-huh. and you mentioned your most memorable wins have been kind of team things. One with your dad, one uh-huh. with your brother. What's uh-huh. been your most memorable golf shot? Oh, wow. Well, I can I can tell you a great story because my dad would never say it, and. Um, and I heard the story from from other from him, and then I'll tell I'll tell you this one, and I'll tell you one that I think of for me. Okay, so um, my dad, like I said, he was a good player, and um, passed away in two thousand five, and he played Augusta National I think five or six times. And in nineteen ninety, he um, was playing, and he just you know after he got done with the round, he kind of nonchalantly you know came home and. I guess I was in college then, and he's like, "Hey, you know, I played against National Day." And I was like, "Oh, cool!" And he goes, "I made a two on eleven. I was like, "What?" And he goes, "He made a two on eleven. He's, he's I'm left handed, and he and I'm, my dad's left handed as well. David's a right handed player." And then he goes, "He hit a perfect. He hit, he hit like a foot of twelve. Then was back right. He hit like a hook eight iron in there. Or is much easier shot for left hander, left hole than a right hander." When I played it, it didn't seem that. I mean, I was like, "Oh, it's a perfect little hook, whatever," you know, and um. Right hander is a different thing to come out of it as what, right? And um and so then he hit a cut perfectly on thirteen and he was right there like on a five, four, and he chucked in the water, made six. So he um uh, could have played eight main corner, two, two, whatever, three, right? And so when they were in there having lunch afterwards, the pro at the time, his son played golf at Furman, and I knew his son decently, and um so they started talking and he and the caddy said, Hey, so one of these guys made two and he came in and he goes, Bob, which one made which one of y'all made two at eleven? And he goes, Well, I did. And so they were in there after having lunch at, you know, getting some stuff in the pro shop. And he goes, Do you mind if we have the ball? He goes, No, sure. He gave him the ball. No big deal. My dad was number one for mementos, like that kind of thing anyway. And he goes, I've been doing some research and um, you're the first two we ever had here. I was like, in the history of the club and masters wow. ever, ever, ever. And then he hit a bad shot. He said the pin was back left. He kind of hit a push forward and caught the slope and just rolled perfectly. And he hit it thin. And, but he still went in as a two, right? And um, so he um, didn't really make a big deal out of it. And um, it just was his way. And then about a month later, he gets his package in the mail, like a UPS package from you know, Augusta National Golf Club. And the ball's mounted on a plaque. And I had it in my office. And it says, presented to Bob Darger from Augusta National. And it, says what he you know, made it to and the players in the group and and they told him in you know, the first two ever you know in the history of the club and on that hole and then like night so let's see brad 1996 now brad faxon final round pins kind of middle right and he hits a six iron he hits on the up on that slope and kicks down hard there's two bumps and the tops there not a really good shot and it, it went in for a two they're like hey the first two ever you know ever the masters it, it flies the first two at the club and I was sitting there on Sunday with my dad, and I looked at him. I was like, no, it's the second two. And um, and then K.J. Choi made one in 2004, 
for the new tee that he'd make a two iron for like 240. And um, so as far as I know, I know a couple of members and I've asked, that there's been three twos there, but my father was the first. And um, he would never tell you about that story. Every time I'm in someone's office for, you know, work and, you know, appointment, half the people in Columbia have a picture of a guy's national in our office. And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, I got a great story I can tell you about that. And T would never tell anybody. And I just I thought that was great. And so that's awesome. So my, my, okay. I could, uh, one that comes to mind, my senior year at South Carolina was the first year they had the regionals. Like they used to just do like a bid system, like the um, NCAA basketball tournament. So they would like do it like by ge- geography, like they give the Northern schools the same amount of business, Southern schools to keep it fair. And, and back then, I know this changed now because there's a lot more money in college athletics and especially and in college golf. But the Northern schools really were pretty bad in golf back then, like the Illinois, which are excellent. Like Adam Hunt, who plays for Florida, is a golfer at Illinois now. He's just faced a freshman year. They're a top five school. Ohio State was really the only good school at North because of the Jack Nicholas effect, right? Everybody else was kind of bad. And they get bitched in the NCAAs and they would shoot them, you know. Would break 300 and missed the cut by a mile. And they finally went to the regional system. They did, uh, I think just Carolina just finished the regionals today. They do that, they did five regionals and, or six regionals now, five events from each region for 30 teams. The first year, my senior year, Carolina, they did three regionals one on the east coast, one in the middle, one on the west coast. And ours was at New Haven, Connecticut, at Yale, which is a famous golf course. I'm not sure why it's top, whatever they say it is, because it's. Nothing's it's it's famous by the designer, but it was kind of a not in the best shape. Let me put it that way. We played it, but um, and so the la the ninth hole is this crazy par three with a if you ever look at it online. I mean, picture it's the the, the green's the size of a football field. I mean, literally, is a it's a six club green, and it's got a giant dip in the middle of it. That's like I mean, you can't put it through it because it's so steep. So it's like a maybe a, a straight downhill over a lake. Maybe a six iron in front of the green, and it's like two forty to the back of the green. The six iron back then was like for me was like one hundred eighty yards, or like two sixty to the back of the green. Yeah, it's like it's like one one sixty five to the front and two sixty to the back fringe. I mean, it's nuts. I've, you've never seen a hole like this, even in Scotland. When I've been there, I've never, I've never seen a green like this. I mean, it's almost like just they say it's a great hole. I don't know if it's a great hole or not, but it's, it's a unique hole. Put it that way. Yeah. It's, anyway, the the pins back right and. Uh, Brett and I quickly, Brett's on the senior tour now, he's an excellent player. And everyone's in this hole has got like four groups because for obvious reasons, 250 over water and straight downhill and pretty visually intimidating. And Steve, because we, we weren't playing well. We had a really good team that year. We won five tournaments and we thought we had a chance to win our championship because we need two pars. And, you know, again, you, you don't want to let your teammates down. You really don't care about letting yourself down. Sometimes individual tournaments, you just go play, but you don't want to feel like you're letting your teammates down. And so, I was up, I was first to hit, and I hit a one iron, and it hit it. It's just perfect, high draw. You know, just it was, everybody played pinks back then. At least we did. We had we were pink. South Carolina was a pink school. I had a ping one iron, ping out two one iron, and just just you know just nutted it. It was perfect, and never left the pin. Pin was back right, and I'm the left hand. I'm drawing in there, at like six feet. And goose the putt, missed the putt. I wanted to give Brett a little cushion where he could bogey the last hole. So I goosed the putt, and then Brett came around on top of me and hit it in the middle of the green or middle back of the green and two putter from 30 feet. And so that, to me, given the circumstances, was probably the, one of the best shots I've ever hit. It always comes to mind because I remember, like, Steve, because I remember we, were, we drove back from New Haven that day, that night, and we drove all the way from New Haven to Columbia, which is like 16 hours. I think I was the last one to stay awake with him. And we were talking. He goes, if you can concentrate like that, well, that shot under that that kind of pressure, you can you can you, know, you can go a long way in this game. I mean, you can play professionally play on the PJ tour. So that always gave me some confidence, and that was kind of like my next to last college tournament. And then we went to the NCAA's in Poppy Hills. I'll share this with you. You like me to? Yeah, I'll do, I'll do it quick. Oh yeah. And, uh, and uh, NCAA is our senior year. We were, I thought we had a chance to win. Um, we thought we had a chance to win. We were ranked, I don't know, sixth or eighth in the country, and uh, we had a good team and. Um, Poppy Hills is right above Pebble Beach there, you know, the the, mm-hmm. in the forest. And um the fog the it was clear as a clear as a bell in the morning, the fog rolled in the afternoon. You could not see twenty feet in front of you. It still makes me mad to this day. That's why I'm that's why I'm bringing this up. It still makes me mad. And the NCA officials, you know, for just like every other sport, they're can be a little arrogant at times and they're know it alls. And um 
and they don't. I don't know why who who made this decision, but they like play on. We had to play around the golf in that fog, and we shot about three ten, which is really bad in college golf, but um, and back then it's really bad now because golf's a little easier with the equipment. And um, the next day we went out in the morning and shot 276 on the same golf course. You know, so that shows you how bad it was. Because you could see and, the uh, holes. You couldn't see. I mean, it, it, you literally, you were just guessing where you thought it was. It was, it was ridiculous. And um, and um, we were the only team to make the cut, 36 hole cut, that played the afternoon the first day, which is pretty telling. And then we played like, you know, low 280s the last two days, but we were so far back, we finished like 10th. And that to me was like unfair, but I'll take you back to what my dad said. This is, there's nothing fair about this. Life's not fair. Golf's not fair. It mirrors life. So it was a learning experience and it was a little frustrating. But um, anyway, we had a good group and I'm still friends with a lot of those guys. We have a, a USC golf team group text that has grown over the years. We've probably got 70 guys on there that play golf at USC and Wow. We, you know, from all, all different eras. And um, and when somebody does something good, we put it on there and cheer it. And when somebody unfortunately passes away, we put it on there and you know, and commiserate and and um it's like a it's like a family. And it's and we wouldn't have that if we didn't have golf. That's yeah. what that was our that's what we have in common. That's a great which brotherhood. Is, which is really cool. Hey golf friends, this is Robbie from Best Ball. Are you looking for the ultimate Myrtle Beach golf experience? Well, it's only a click away. Check out the two-play special at two of America's most awarded public golf courses and two of my personal favorites. Caledonia Golf and Fish Club and True Blue Golf Club are low country masterpieces featuring two iconic Mike Strance designs. Play these two incredible courses for one great price. Visit truebluegolf.com to learn more about the two-play special and book your tee time today. That's truebluegolf.com. As we wrap up, we do this thing called a quick nine. It's just kind of a okay. rapid rapid fire thing. So okay. uh, what's the favorite course that you've ever played? Augusta National. And okay. I'll take and I got one more. Okay. I have to do a tie. Do a tie. Uh whenever we Scotland last year finally did that trip. And um I will say St. Andrews, uh, this is the closest thing I've had to a religious experience on the golf course. It was it was incredible. Uh, it was, was incredible. I was checking incredible. out your pictures and it was incredible. It was, it was incredible. All right, favorite course in South Carolina. Boy, can I give you a couple? Yeah. Okay. Um, I really love the Dudes Club a lot. I really love Camden Country Club a lot. Only Donald Ross course in South Carolina is fabulous. I love Donald Ross design golf courses. I really like um, – I'm a member of Columbia Country Club. I pulled that in there. I, I'm not a big Pete Dye fan, I think, but I really love the College River Pete Dye course. Okay. It is my, my most favorite dock course ever played. Okay. I, that one's on a, on a bucket list for me, for sure. I haven't played it. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. fabulous. Yeah. All right. Uh, you've listed some great ones. What's uh, what's the top bucket list course for you? Anywhere. Cy Cypress Point. Okay. Cypress Point. I was out there last – I was out at Pebble. Uh, I took my wife out there and another couple went out there two years ago for a trip. That's the first time I've been – there since the NCAA tournament, I was commiserating about that fog thing. I was talking about it and with the guys I was with. They're like, "I oh, we've heard the story before. Stop it!" All right, so um, but um, we were right there, and I tried, I tried. I knew I was going out there, and I called a few people, and um, just didn't work out. But that was definitely one that I want to play. That's it, we. I've been there, and it's it's just it's magical. Yeah. All right. Who would be in your dream foursome? Boy. Past, present, can be anybody. Jack, Nicholas, Bobby Jones, and my father. Very nice. I love to have my, I love, I love to have my brother with you, too, so it'd be a possible. Yeah. Hey, your, uh, your bucket <laughs> list, your dream, man. We can do it. All right. What's the best thing about golf in South Carolina? The friendships. I mean, I I didn't think that much about that stuff when I was younger, but that is, that's everything to me. But, I mean, that's the one thing I miss about – I've not played a whole lot of golf in the last five years because, yeah, I still have a job and and I feel like I have to, yeah, you know, have family commitments I need to be there for. And we have a seventh a seventh grader in the house and um and um and just when I go to these tournaments and I see guys I haven't seen forever or not forever but I only see at golf tournaments and and in this the relationships and the friendships are just that's the most that's that's awesome and I, I mean these guys are my you know. 
I mean, I've, this, I, mean, I love these guys. Yeah. I really do. All right. Don't this might be, it. yeah, this might be a similar answer. What's the best thing about coaching high school golf? Um, I don't know. The Manasco standing at emotional, so I'm trying to get emotional. Um, I enjoyed coaching the girls' team because I have daughters. I coached my brother, my, my niece, David's oldest daughter, Meadows, and um, thought that was so cool. I have a memory, a lifetime memory. Now, obviously, I have three daughters. Like I said earlier, I don't have any sons. And um, I've coached 98 boys in, at AC Flora. I did the math. I counted them up the other day, 98 different boys. And um, so I feel like, in a way, I've got like 98 kind of, you know, like what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, not sons, but nephews. Yeah, younger nephews, brothers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I and I and, and those kids and, I, and some of the kids that played for me, they still call and we talk and and they've asked, you know, and they when something's good happens, they call and 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 um and um that's really cool. The, yeah, that's and I feel like that's that filled a void in my life for sure. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, fun question. This is Jonathan's favorite question. Uh, yeah. What's your what's the favorite snack on the golf course? I toasted you crackers. Okay, that's the best, and Slim Jims. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even like Slim Jims, but for some reason, Slim Jims on a golf course. Uh, it's kind of like um, you know, do a baseball game, you get a hot dog. Yep. You really like a hot dog any time? No. You get a football <laughs> game or a baseball game, hot dogs pretty darn good. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, toasted cheese crackers and Slim Jims. Are the best, and I don't, and and I only like orange Gatorades. I'm I'm, not, I'm a Carolina guy, but I only like orange Gatorades. I don't know why, but that's my first choice on that one. There you go. All right, uh, what is your favorite golf course logo? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. I've never ever the one you know, on your head there is pretty darn good because I played there. Tree Farm is outstanding, and yep. um, I thought. You played there, right? I have. Okay, so you know number or the short part for five, eight, six. Got the left hole up the hill a little bit. There's three trees through the fairway you aim at. Yeah, they're just perfect. Like, why is that not the logo? Why aren't those three trees a logo? That should be the logo. And the first time I went, the guy, took, the member that took me, he goes, "What'd you think?" I was like, "I thought I said I think it's fabulous." And um, I was like, "What?" Well, he goes, "What's your favorite hole?" I was like, "We started like on the part. We started on ten. Then we started on 10. And um, so I was trying to get my eyes to you. It's like, well, the uphill double left hole, which is like our whatever, our sort of sixth hole, whatever, or, or, or there's our back down hole, 15, 14th hole, whatever, 15th hole. I was like, that hole was just, it's set perfectly. Obviously, he's a left hander. He hit a little perfect, hit it right there. There's three trees with a fade. Um, and um, the green was really cool, too. I think I made three there, too, which always helps. That but, always uh, helps. I thought that was that always helps. And um, it just fra- it, the hole was framed perfectly. I thought I thought it was a really cool design because the fairway looks not that big, but you got there and it's huge. You land an airplane in it. Um, I like simplistic designs. I really like peach trees design. It just says peach tree golf club and it's blocked. Um, and I actually did a flora hat this year for our guys. I sent it to Bert Atkinson and Cl- and Charleston who does our hats for the golf team. I was like, we always had the AC Flora logo, just the F, and we have one that says Flora. And we, I was, I want to mix them up, and do it a little differently. I was like, I sent him a copy of the peach tree hat, and it was just a block. And it was like, he did AC floral with that. And, you know, everybody likes that hat. Everybody's like, the parents, can I get one? Can we got like, we had gray, white, and red. And I was like, I was like, okay, well. And so I gave them all out. I was like, I get some more, I guess. Cause they're, so I like simplistic logos. And I, it's, and I, it's funny, if you asked that, I said, I've kind of a, um, I don't know if I said a logo snob, but now I only wear golf shirts. If you see the one I'm wearing now, it's from St. Andrews. Oh, nice. and, um, and so when I went over there, I got something from every – so every time I wear a, a Peter Millard, my favorite shirt to wear, I, I guess, and every shirt's always got a logo of some golf course on it. So I do definitely look at the logos. I, um, but yeah, I think just s- s- simplicity is the best way, I think. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know, it's just kind of cool. It's like universal, you know. And um, it's hard to beat the Gus National logo. It's been it's been so you see it everywhere, and, you see, and so many people have tried to copy it. It's kind of cool, but um, you know, there's so many good ones. There uh, are, but uh, yeah, so many good ones. Yep, uh, there are. Um, all right, uh, one more question. Actually, I got a yep. bonus one. But uh, okay, what is one word to describe the 2024 AC Flora golf team? Resilient, resilient. 
they uh, we had we faced some adversity this year, and um, one one of the reasons, and I, our principal came down, um, Susan Childs, and our AD Michelle Yeeter came down to watch the state. It was at Bluffton, and our one and two guys, Charles and Coleman, got off to a different start the last day, and I said, and I remember uh, we had a, a six shot lead um, over North Augusta, and um, I turned to them and I was like. You know, and I, I felt confident we were going to win the whole time. I never didn't think – I never thought – but, you know, we still got to get perform, right? And, um, and through about nine holes, I was like, you're going to see why we play all these tournaments because we play a very aggressive schedule. And um, our um, three, four, and five guys carried the day. They won the tournament for us. And um, most schools, if you have one and two in high school golf, they're having a rough day. It's going to be a long day for the team. And – um our guys, our, our front guys bought it back, which I knew they would. Um, but um, three, four, and five guys, especially the five guy, we had um, – we played two two co-five guys um, this year at State. A sophomore and freshman, sophomore Billy Milliken. He played right around part of the first day. Steady Eddie, which is what you need. I need you to be out there and just lead by example. And once your score filters back, you know, it's going to give our guys a shot in the arm. And um, and that's exactly what he did. Did exactly what, had, you know, what we needed. And then we put – William and Owen Atkinson, who's Owen's a freshman, they both had 73.6 stroke averages, which are outstanding for that age player. And um, and um, they'd be playing one, two, three at any other team in the state. And we had three or four of the guys that, that, that deserved to be playing that, that weren't playing because we just had our depth. And um, and he did the same thing. And I remember we were standing on the um, – there's a shotgun start zone. So he was finished on the second hole, which is – I remember this is vividly. It was a 202-yard par three. Dead flat at sea level, obviously, with the water right, and we whatever the art. Well, I looked at the we the artist book because he was waiting to hit his shot, and I was like, you know, he had one eighty two hundred two to the hole, one eighty five to the front of the green, and I was like, oh, what? And this is a freshman now. So he's fourteen years old. I guess he's well, fifteen years old now, I guess. And um, because he has an early birthday, and um, he's a big tall kid. He doesn't look his age, but he is he is a freshman. I've seen his birth certificate, and um, and um, I go. I need we need you to hit it um 195 yards. What what do you think? I thought six iron. He goes, Coach, that's a seven. I was like, well, make a good full swing at it because you can miss left. But I, I didn't say you can't miss right, but there's water right. I wasn't gonna put that yeah. in his head, but he could but he couldn't miss right. And that thing never left the pen and went dead middle of the green, ten feet short of the hole, seven iron, two oh two. He flew us and the ball didn't move an inch when it landed, so he flew a seven iron. One ninety four in the air. Which is pretty impressive. I would have hit five iron there. That would yeah. right now. That would have been five iron for me. And so I was impressed by that. And I, I think I'm not easily impressed on the golf course sometimes. So and I gave him an applause and I looked at his mom and I was like, I don't give fake applause. But I give an applause, it's it's warranted. But that was awesome. that kind of that kind of slammed the door. So resilient would be the word. Resilient. Great word. All right. Bonus question. Who's gonna win yeah. the PGA championship this week? You got a pick? Well, um, I made a little pool I do with these guys. My brother got me in this, and then you have to pick a player a week. And um, I've won two tournaments here. I picked Rory last week, and it's, it's just straight money. So, obviously, the elevated events in the majors are the most important things in the Players' Championship. And I picked Scheffler at the um, at the, at the uh, Masters, so that was kind of big for me. And um, I'm not a live guy, as you can imagine. But I do think John Rahm is an outstanding player. I wish he wouldn't have gone to that, but I do understand why he did it. Just come out and say I took the money, and I'm just for my, you know, security for my family. Don't say that all the hogwash yeah. about drawing the game and stuff because they read a script. But it, I picked Rahm, and um, the McElroy's playing outstanding. It'd be hard to pick him. I'm not a big McElroy fan because he just seems to wilt sometimes in the big moments. But um, gosh, Scheffler is amazing, um, but. I don't. I, I I debated between Wyndham Clark, Max Homa, and John Rahm, and the only I'm going to use one live guy in this pool because I'm not a live guy. But I was like, I got to pick Rahm at some point, and I was, so I picked Rahm. All right. And it, it's it's kind of, and it's it's a Nicholas course, and if anyone you know him, my Nicholas courses are usually in favor of left to right player because he was left to right player for the most part, and um, my favorite player, obviously, but um, and I think he's the greatest player of all time. But if you're a right hander that cuts it. You got an advantage on a Nicholas course, and if you're long, because it usually gives you ample or ample room on the tee shot. You got to be able to hit it high, and then as you let it, it greens, and they get it firm and fast. And 
It's really going to play. It's really going to favor a power player. I think last time with Tiger won there, Mark Brooks won there one time, so he's not a power player. And, he, and McElroy won there last time, correct? So yeah, it's a power it's a power player golf course for sure. Big yeah. golf course. Yep. Well, it'll be fun to watch. That kicks off tomorrow. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll release this tomorrow, so it'll be fun to cool. uh, when you're watching. But uh, Robert, thanks for joining us. Congrats again on the the program's 18th uh, state championship. Yeah, Falcons, thank you. There you go. Well, everybody, we appreciate y'all listening or watching another episode of the Whole Story Podcast. Mm-hmm.